Have you bought one of the cheapest Amazon or eBay aluminium TIG welders? Well, I did. I started it two hours ago. Had no idea what I was doing. Um, I couldn't find any kind of comprehensive videos with regards to settings or, or anything with this machine. So, if you're here now, I'm going to show you how to set it up and I'm going to do an inboxing for those people that are kind of interested in this welder. But obviously, I'm going to have to do the inboxing in reverse because it's already unboxed. So rather than me put it all in a box and just along this video out pointlessly, I'm just going to show you everything that's in the box itself. So you get a unit, obviously. Um, there is something to address on that before you even do anything with that unit itself. You need to remove the plug um, fuse because I don't know whether they're trying to kill us Westerners from China, but they're putting links across the fuses themselves. That is a 13 amp fuse with a solid metal link across it, sold at both ends. So that fuse isn't doing anything. There's no excuse not to change it. You can get 10 fuses for like about two pound at the shop. So make sure you change it before even putting it in because if there's a massive fault on this and you haven't got good electrics at home, you, it could be a potential fire hazard. So make sure that's done, number one. So that is a unit. The second thing you get, which is also pointless, um, is this tubing. Now the reason this is, this is pointless tubing, um, it goes from your gas regulator to the back of the unit, is because on the back of the unit, the barb that comes out, it doesn't even fit that. It is slightly too big. So I've used their rubbish fittings that they uh, get you, which is like a Jubilee clip. Screwed it, screwed it down, and it was just leaking constant air from there. So this bit, you may as well just chuck in the bin and get some better quality hose, which is what I've done, and use two good quality Jubilee clips. So that is that. The other thing you get in, again, which I'm not using, is the stick welder um, torch kind of lead. You put, you obviously plug it in, put your stick welder in, uh, your, your welding sticks, whatever. I don't use that, so that's been chucked to one side. The earth clamp, which, in all honesty, the quality of it's a bit bit questionable at best um, and the other thing as well it's quite short so I do a lot of welding with my other TIG welder um, it's not an AC one um, but yeah the other welder has like a really long one of these on and obviously a long TIG torch having a short one kind of restricts it because your welder needs to be near something or a tip for you if you do what I do is have a long bar of metal clamp it and then just wedge the bit of metal onto what it is and it just it acts as a long lead but it would be nicer if there was a better quality one of those um, and obviously longer the other thing um, is obviously the torch and you've got the torch fittings which I'll quickly show someone you how to assemble this um, if you don't know but it comes here with a ugh, box of different ends and, and whatnot and then the most pointless thing in here which I found was the instruction manual so that is what comes with the wilder on its own now you can buy a kit with the pedaling I didn't do that now the reason I didn't do that and I bought the pedal separately is because the unit with the pedal together is around 500 pounds it's like 499 pounds um, however buying it separately so I bought the Wilder on its own on Amazon on a deal uh, it was 50 pound off and it made it 300 and I think it was 319 pounds but it's always there's always a voucher for this unit on Amazon so basically that was about 300 pound and then I went on to eBay and bought this for 25 quid. So for less than 350 quid, I've got the two together rather than paying nearly 500 pound for it. Now, from what I've been told, you do need the pedal for aluminium welding. Um, I haven't got enough experience to tell you whether you do or not, um, but I am going to show you kind of how to set it up with the pedal. Additional things you're going to want, obviously, if you're even attempting to do this, is some TIG welding gloves. A decent quality helmet. Now this is the cheapest ESAB one, uh, but it's basically, it's colour view and it works really well. I wouldn't bother with the Chinese, Chinese 20 quid one. I know we're using a Chinese welder, but you only get one pair of eyes, so you're better off just spending a bit more. I think that was only like 70, 80 quid, but how much do your eyes worth? How much do they cost you? Do you know what I mean? Like just get quality stuff. The other thing is you need a bottle of pure argon. Now I've got a full size cylinder, um, just because I do a lot of welding on stainless steel and obviously 100% pure argon is what you use for aluminium as well. Um, and obviously a good quality regulator. So those are the things you need. Oh, and the other thing is you'll want some of these tungstens. Now it does come with a pair of tungstens. It comes with a pair of red ones. Um, for the purposes of this video and if you're going to set it up exactly the same as me, then what you want to do is get some 2.4, um, 2%. I've got no idea what that says. I think it's lathinated, but oh, I could be wrong. But basically, as long as it matches that word there, it's 2%. And more importantly, it's the blue ended uh, tungstens then we're all good to go, baby. So, I'm gonna show you how to sharpen the ends up quickly. Well, we're getting close to personal here, but your tungsten end comes like this, 
Obviously, it's blue on the other end. Um, what you want to do is, you can do it with a grinder. I've got a belt sander, luckily, so I'll show you. But you want to sharpen it like this. Right. right, so unlike stainless steel where you put like a really good point on it, this is kind of the point I've gone with. I don't know whether it'll focus or not. Um, but it's like a 60 degree, probably. Uh, and it's not it's not really sharp on the end. Um, what you'll find is when you start doing aluminium welding, it'll ball very slightly on the end anyway, and it'll work really well. So you don't need a massively long point, but this is ready now to chuck into the um, torch end, and I'll show you how to assemble all that. So it's gonna be quicker to copy me than it will be to learn Chinese and work out what they say in the instructions of how to assemble this. But you've got your 2.4 mil tungsten already uh, belt sanded into a small point. You have then, a bag of fittings, now I'm just using a gas lens with the number 6 on, so I assume if you're going to be following my settings exactly, get that one out. You get the torch like this, you look for this piece here, push it in that end and start screwing it till it kind of finds its thread, which it does there. As you can see, give it a good hand tight, it's not going anywhere, so that is that bit there. Then you need one of these things, can't remember what it's called, call it something I can't really remember, but look on it and it will say 2.4. So basically if you're using like a 1.6, one of these, you'd look for the one that's 1.6. Obviously we're using a 2.4. You can test it by putting it through. That is that, so that is good to go. So we pop that through and obviously at the moment that can kind of go wherever it wants. I normally leave that quite loose and I'll put the end on, which is this. So that bit goes onto there and essentially screws up till you can't screw it anymore. Don't over tighten it because it is Chinese stuff. Just make sure it's it's tight on there. Um, although I shouldn't have tightened it too much, should I? So slacking it off a little bit so you've still got some movement. Reason being is the next bit. So the end just gets screwed on. So obviously it's curved end. Curved end on first and then obviously flattened pointing away. So curved end in like that. Now the reason I needed to leave that thing loose in the first place is so I could push this where it needs to be. Now for me, I have it about yay. So I get it about there. If you can see, there is a proper formula for doing it, but I don't follow formulas. Screw it up. And then obviously that tungsten is in there ready to go. Just don't poke yourself in the eye with it. So that is that assembled. Now we're going to assemble these parts onto the wilder itself. So. When you get the welder, you want to unwind this bit here. And as you can see, the positive is the earth terminal. So the earth terminal, which is this one here. Oh, we've got all the wires going. You basically put it in and twist it clockwise until it doesn't twist anymore. That is your earth terminal clipped off. So, that will go on to some kind of metal work. Obviously I'm going to be welding on the bench, I'm just going to connect it to that so it's done, it's out of the way. Now the second bit would be the TIG torch. Now if you don't have the pedal, and I'm advising to buy the pedal because I've been told to buy the pedal, um, then you would connect both of these sections, sorry, all three of these sections to the welder. So that bit off of there, you put your gas on, which is this one. Now I didn't need a wrench for this, um, from memory but I'm going to show you how to do it with a wrench so just get a wrench don't over tighten this at all just nip it like that and jobs are good and so that is your gas connected the torch itself is similar to the earthing one you plug it in on the left hand side which is this side twist it till it doesn't twist anymore then this is your switch button so this is the controller um, for this switch here. However, you wanna be using the pedal. So, we don't have this connected, we connect the pedal. The pedal is here, and you can't go wrong, is the five pin switch there, and you plug that in, now it only goes in a certain way, so you get it to the point where it goes in, which has just gone in like that, pushes. You gotta be very delicate with this, because again, it's Chinese material, um, but then you just screw in the outer, until it's finger tight. Now I'll show you with the one I'm not using so you see what I mean. You push it in and you just kind of twist like that. Now that is the wilder setup in terms of connecting everything to it. 
So, settings. Now, first thing you want to do is plug it in, turn it on at the wall, and there's a switch on the back, which you also flick and turn it on. And then you'll get this crazy display. Now, once it's stopped messing around up here, you can work out what you're doing in terms of settings here. Now, this is already set up for what I was doing. So I'm just going to mess all the settings up quickly and show you what you want to select. So if you're just doing aluminium like I'm doing and showing you, then you want to make sure it's not on MMA, it's on TIG, and you do that by pressing the top button. So TIG is illuminated. Um, because you're doing aluminium, you want it on AC. So AC is now illuminated. Um, you don't want it on pulse, you want it on the flat line one. So you click it on there, and then 2T or 4T, you click it on 2T. So that is all those settings dialed in on that side. Obviously, we'll talk about gas and stuff in a minute, but we're going to go through all these settings on here. Now, the first one, and you click this button to get where it is. The first one is post gas, and that's how many seconds. So I've got 0.9 of a second, um, as far as I believe, but that's post gas. So obviously, it puts a bit of gas out, then hits the arc, and away you go, in theory. So you can change that by, I've got to click it again. So post gas, you change it by wiggling this knob here. Um, so I'm going to put it back on 9 because that's how it was. So again, if you're looking at the settings, it's a 9. Um, the next one is start amps. Now there's no way of adjusting this with a pedal switch in. I thought my wild was broken. Turns out it's not, it's because there's a pedal attached to it. So the next one is start amps, leave that at 10 because you can't change it anyway. We then go up to upslope. I've just got that at zero. Then we go to pulse tig. Now it's not on pulse. You want to make sure this is away because there's no way of adjusting any of the amps on this. The way that you adjust any of the amps on this section is by the control switch on here so for some unknown reason you can't change it there you've got to change it there so hold that down and if you touch the end of that wilder now you're going to get a shock but see how that says 76 if i spin that door with my other finger i can change that where it needs to go now i had that earlier on 90 um i don't know why it's gone 76 it's probably me moving it but so it'll be start amps will be 10 as soon as you do it it should be 90 and then obviously you can let go of the pedal and control the amps that way, hence why the pedal's there. So I'm gonna be wilding on 90, maybe going to 100, 120, we'll see in a minute, but there, the wilding amps, so that's kind of the thing you change um, often. The next thing is your AC frequency. Now mine is set at 140. Messing around with that kind of was determined whether it wilded or not. It was, it was messing around with the, the wild pull. So again, if you're following mine, just chuck it at 140. The next one after the 140 is the AC balance. Now that depends on um, the heat making the pull or cleaning. Now, <coughs> I've had the percentage um, on 60, that works really well. Um, I've had people tell me you need to do it at like 50 or 35. For me, while I've done it, this setup at the minute it seems to work at 60. So if you just dial in your settings exactly the same as me, um, you'll, you'll get a decent wild and then obviously you can fine tune how you want. Then the other thing is, uh, so down slope is the next one across. I've got that at zero. Finishing amps, again, you can't change it. You can't change the start or finishing amps when you've got the foot pedal in. And then post gas, which is the gas afterwards, I've got that set up at five seconds. So obviously you can hold it there and let it all cool down on what it needs to do. So we'll go through this again. TIG AC flatline 2T. And then we've got the settings, which is, first one is 0.9 pre-gas. Start amps 10, upslope 0, that is controlled by your foot pedal. So again, 90 on that one. Your next one, AC frequency 140, AC balance 60, downslope 0, finishing amps, again you can't change that, it's 10. And then finally, the post gas, which is 5.0. Now I'm talking about gas, I'm going to quickly show you, because this is crucial, um, the gas settings on the regulator for the gas. Now, that was where I made the massive mistake on it. You need to make sure your gas is dialed in as much as the machine itself. Right, quickly showing you the gas bottle settings. Now, this is obviously a pure argon. Uh, ignore that, that's just how much gas I've got in it. But you want your regulator set at 20 psi, and then you want your flow meter set around 14 litres per minute. And what that means is obviously the ball is floating around number 14. So, Ignoring the noise of the TIG wilder, but as you see when I activate the TIG, the ball is bang on 14 up here. Obviously you can hear that it's got a bit of a delay because um, that's what the post gas timing is. But yeah, once it's stopped, 
as you can see the ball will go back down so that is how i've got it set up gas is very 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 important with this um but i'm going to just show you a quick weld and then yeah job's good and that's probably wrapped up kind of how to use this machine So something that kind of resembles a weld, it's gone through the back. So if that was on steel, I'd be more than happy with that. Obviously, you guys would be able to weld a lot better than me. Um, my excuse is genuinely, I've literally only, like this is how I'm practicing now. So um, hopefully that's going to show you how to use this welder. It is actually a decent welder, to be fair. Um, I'm sure you guys will get a lot better finish than I do. But yeah, hopefully that's helped a few of you out because that instruction manual was absolute tosh. Peace out.